Hey guys, it's General Heat here, uh, once again, as always, <laughs> and today we're going to be revisiting the time travel glitch on Sierra 117. So, I've actually never made this video in the past, um, I've always wanted to, but it's a really hard glitch to do. Uh, but for some reason, it turns out to be a little easier in the Master Chief collection, at least to me. Because back on the 360, we could never get the work. Well, we got the work once, but I didn't record it, and we lost the film clip, so I gave up. But here we are again revisiting it, and this time we got it to work. So, without further ado, what you gotta do is just um, start at this part of the. the this, I think this is the second rally point in Sierra 117. Just uh, start at this part, and then, you know, proceed through as normal. Uh, just really nothing special you gotta do just yet. Uh, we did this on easy difficulty, so you don't really have to worry about that either. Um, uh, as for skulls, we have the uh, the three fun skulls, as I like to call them, which is uh, Cowbell, Grump Birthday Party, and I would've been your daddy. We also have Tilt Skull on here, but that's not necessary. We thought it might be. I mean, it can help a little bit, give you a little bit of extra insurance, but that's all. Anyways, once you get to this cliff here, don't go any further. You want to stop here and wait for uh, Johnson to cross the bridge and do his dialogue and everything. Uh, and then after that, just, you know, after a few seconds, just backtrack. Walk all the way back to um, the beginning of this forest. You know, right where the, um, the pipes and the concrete buildings are. So the reason why you want to do that is, for some reason, when you backtrack and you wait a few minutes, the phantom over there will slowly start to drift into the map. And this is really important. Now, sometimes it doesn't drift in the map for some reason, and if it doesn't, you can try backtracking again, or you can either revert to last save or restart the mission. But it will eventually flow into the map, uh, and it will stop eventually. But as you can see, this is where we backtrack to. You don't have to like follow our exact steps, but you know we're just chilling around, hanging around. Um, there is no like perfect timing to this. It's just you know, just wait a few minutes and you should be okay. But you know, we there's no way to tell because you won't be watching. So just give it a few minutes just to be safe. But after that, uh, you can just uh, walk right back. So while we do that, uh, time for a quick pun. So what did the judge say when the skunk walked in the courtroom? Odor in the court. I get it. <laughs> Odor. <laughs> Anyways, now that we're back here, uh, I would suggest you wait for everyone to catch up. Because sometimes you gotta be a little quick. Uh, otherwise, the phantom might fly away. But in most cases, it shouldn't. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, we have a special guest in this video today. And once again, it is Delta Misfit from uh, CM Nears videos. As well as a bunch of other uh, big YouTube channels back in the day. And we were really glad to have him on board uh, helping us out with this video again. So, yeah, just a little shout out to him. So yeah, once you have everyone here, uh, just proceed on ahead. Hopefully you get a checkpoint here. If you do get a checkpoint, that'd be like a really perfect, perfect one. Otherwise, you have to be a little careful because if you mess up, you could go back pretty far and do the whole thing again. And there's no guarantee it'll work again. Alright, so what you need to do is you need to have someone on the turret of the Phantom and everyone else inside. But one person needs to stay outside and kill the Brute Chieftain. And then once they kill them, they need to take the Gravity Hammer from the Brute Chieftain. So once everyone is in position and one person is on the turret, the other player needs to go behind the Phantom, or at least find a good angle for the Phantom, and then use their Gravity Hammer to lodge the Phantom uh, out of this place. Because once the phantom floats to like a certain position, like back to where it kind of started, uh, it will start, um, its original functions will kick in and it will just start flying away like it's supposed to. So it will probably take a few swings. Make sure this person stays behind though and does not die. As for the rest of us, just stay on the phantom and wait till it hits this barrier. Uh, once it hits the barrier, wait for it to stabilize. And then whoever's on the turret, they can get off and the phantom will continue. And you want to jump out right here and land on the rock right here. Uh, if you miss it, then well, you might have to revert to last checkpoint. So, once you're here, 
Uh, like I said, leave at least one person back there. I mean, you can leave. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many people stay behind. Really, you need at least one person out here. That's the most important part. So the people out here, they just proceed on ahead. You know, just walk around this whole grass area and walk to where the uh, next part of the mission will be. It's as you can see, it's not loaded yet. It's all just the uh, the hall of mirrors or the twilight zone, as I like to call it. Uh, and here we're passing by the cave of a thousand faces again from my previous video. So this is it. This is in fact the uh, other way to. Uh, get to the cave of a thousand faces using this uh, part of the time travel glitch but you know that's not important right now uh, what is important is while the people are walking forward uh, the person who stayed behind he needs to proceed through the rest of the mission as normal just for a little bit at least so here he's walking this way now it's important it's very important actually that once you hit a loading point you stop do not go any further and actually most importantly do not hit the, the cutscene up ahead otherwise you'll mess the whole thing up but what you can do is once you hit the loading point um, as you can see the rest of the map will load but there's nothing there like there's no phantoms or there's no AI if, that's, if that happens have the uh, person who stay behind walk forward into the cave just a little bit more and they'll hit like an invisible loading point which will cause the uh, AI and everything up ahead to load again. So just a few steps forward should be good enough. And as you can see, they did it, and the Phantom and Brute Chieftains and Johnson all loaded in. So yeah, this is about where you know they are. I mean, you can probably walk forward like quite a bit more, just as long as you don't hit the uh, cutscene up ahead, then you'll be fine. Alright, so now we can proceed back into the map. And while we do that, it's time for another pun. So I, the first time I got a universal remote control, I thought to myself, wow, this changes everything. I get it. <laughs> Alright, so here we are at the end of the mission before the cutscene loads. The Brute Chieftain will never attack you, so you can play around with him. Uh, in fact, you can use this to mess with the cutscene a little bit, or at least mess with the rest of the mission. So what we're going to do here is we're going to push the chieftain behind the shield here. The shield is deactivated, but as you can see, you can freely activate it and deactivate it back and forth as many times as you want, which is something you can't do normally without this glitch. But yeah, we pushed the chieftain in here, and we pretty much trapped him in there. And we've also trapped Delta Misfit in there as well. Now, as for Johnson, he is invincible. You can't kill him. No matter how many times you stick him or shoot him in the head, he's, well, he just can't be killed. And unfortunately, that also means that no matter what you do with Johnson, you can't get rid of him. So, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see what happens later. Um, so, for now, we pushed him off the edge. We locked Johnson in here. Um, you know, we're trying to find other ways to mess with the cutscene. Because, you know... Ten years later, you know, it's it's definitely fun to mess with Halo 3 cutscenes and see if you can get some different funny results. So here we tried to mess with the Phantom by blowing it up, but we didn't realize that the Phantom was indestructible. However, that's not, you know, it's not the end of the world, actually. There's actually something else you can do with the Phantom. But we'll get to that in another video. For this video, we're just going to leave the Phantom alone now. And to load the cutscene, you want to walk back to here. And right here, there's... A path you can use to get back up to the top. Um, it's right here behind this tree. You can probably crouch jump up there or if you're not good at crouch jumping you can either grenade jump or if you're not good at grenade jumping then jump off someone's head to get up there. But once you're up there, um, once you're all ready to load the cutscene, you're done you know messing around uh, and everything is good, then just jump up on this ledge here. This ledge is basically where uh, the cutscene is supposed to be. So here we go, loading the cutscene. So Phantom's still there, you know, can't really mess with that that much. See how they beat their trap. But as you can see there, uh, the brute chieftain does appear to be out, and Johnson's also there, and there's a crate in their way. 
and they're, they phase right through the crate. But as you can see, that brute chieftain just disappeared after the cutscene. Like he was walking at the end and then just vanished. He is, in fact, still behind the shield door or the shield barrier. However, Johnson is also still in there. So I don't know why, like, the brute chieftain's position stays inside that room, even though in the cutscene he's there. While Johnson, no matter where you push him, he always gets teleported back in the room. Uh, maybe it's just the way it's scripted to happen. But it's pretty funny that uh, the brute chieftain can be trapped in there. Because he's, like, totally unaware of it. Like, time is, like, frozen for him, basically, when he does glitch. And then when the time resumes, he just, like, all of a sudden finds himself trapped inside the, <laughs> the cell. And he's pretty angry, <laughs> apparently, as you can see. You know, he's like trying to run through and just swinging his hammer. Like he's a lot more aggressive, like this, which is pretty, pretty hilarious. Um, but yeah, this is like one of the fun things you can do with this to mess around with it. So, one last pun for this video. Uh, this one's a slight variation of an older one, but you know, it's still funny. So I used to be a baker. But, you know, I didn't make enough dough, so not anymore. <laughs> get it? Get it? Alright, well, uh, so for the rest of the video, we're just, you know, messing around a little bit. Um, but other than this, uh, this, unlike the other time travel glitches, like on the Covenant uh, in the Ark, uh, you can't really make too many other huge changes to the mission. I s it's not really a much of a shortcut either. It's just pretty much something fun you can do just to mess with things. But, you know, everything else about the mission is pretty much the same. Nothing else has changed. And all scripted actions, all scripted events still occur. The only thing really different is just the brute chieftain's position can be changed. But even that doesn't really change the cutscene too much. I mean, you can still move like crates and boxes in, in like in front of them so that it blocks them. But they just still they still phase right through, like all the other uh, previous messing with cutscene videos that we've done. But uh, yeah, so if there's any other uh, ideas you guys have about how to mess with this cutscene using this glitch, let me know, or try it out yourself and let me know the results. Uh, I'm always curious to see this. Uh, if there's any other funny results of messing with cutscenes. Actually, I do have a pretty uh, funny idea for a cutscene coming up soon. But uh, it's a work in progress. So it'll be a future video. Hopefully within the next few days, we'll be able to get it out to you guys. I'm assuming we can get it to work. But yeah, so we're going to finish the mission here now. And just show you that everything else still remains the same. Even when we finish the, uh, even in the final cutscene. I mean, I guess the last thing you could change about this is you can destroy the turret on here. And if you do that, the turret will be gone in the cutscene on the pelican. But, you know, that's totally unrelated to the time travel glitch. That's something you can do anytime. Alright, so, there you guys have it. Uh, I hope you guys found this to be interesting. Uh, and if you did enjoy this, remember to leave a like. And leave your thoughts and comments and suggestions in the comments, of course. Like I said, I'm very curious uh, if you guys have any other ideas to mess with the cutscene or to improve this glitch. But yeah, uh, and also if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Got a lot of cool videos coming out soon, and we can't wait to share with you guys. So yeah, um, we shall see you guys next time, and we hope you enjoyed.